Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas and I have a quick update on some photovoltaic solar panels. This one you'll notice is submerged in water. I got the idea because I was gonna, I tried hacking one of these panels to get the chips out of there. I was gonna do some tests to see about waterproofing them and I realized that this setup right here is virtually waterproof the way that they make them. They put so much silicone around this that the cells are really protected, all the wiring's protected and everything. This is virtually impossible to get into. So I went ahead and took a chance and dipped one of these in the water and it turns out that they're waterproof. You still get a voltage, good voltage over here. You actually get something a little amazing. This panel right here, if I touch it, it's temperature, it's about 136, 137 degrees Fahrenheit. This one is cool to the touch because it's in cool water. It's about 70 degrees out right now. One thing a lot of people don't realize about photovoltaic solar panels is the cooler they are, the better they operate. And if you're in a cool climate and you have crystal clear sunlight, you're gonna get a better voltage than you do if you're in Florida when it's really hot in the summertime. Now, Florida also, in the summertime, there are tons of clouds, thunderstorms daily, so we don't get as much sunshine as people think. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be showing you these two panels side by side. This one, which is uh, about 140 degrees roughly, I'm gonna get a voltage reading on that and this one that's submerged in the tank. All right, right now we have the submerged panel hooked up and you can see that we are running a small little DC motor and that way there's a load on it and it has 22, 23 volts roughly. It'll spike a little bit here and there. See if I put my hand over it, block some of the light, you can see it actually drops so that we know that that's the one in the tank right there. And the water temperature is about 73 degrees. So this one's 22. Now we're gonna switch it to the other one. All right, now we've moved the uh, unsubmerged panel. These are the identical makes. They produce the same voltage when tested just out in the sun. And you can see the, uh, I don't know if you can see this or not, but the DC motor is actually running a little bit slower. And if you come over here, we're down to 20 volts. And that is strictly because of the heat buildup in this panel. So the submerged panel is that much more efficient than the non-submerged panel. All right, so now we have the unsubmerged panel hooked up to the meter and it's showing 21 volts. That's unsubmerged. And I'm gonna get a temperature reading on this in just a second. But you can see that it's producing 21 volts unsubmerged. So with no load. Now these are 12 volt panels, so with the load they drop down, but you can see that they actually handle that motor pretty well, so that's not a significant load. Now we're gonna hook the submerged panel up. All right, so we've taken that panel down. Now I have the submerged panel here, and it is producing a solid 23 volts. So the cooler panel produces more voltage, and it also carries a heavier load and keeps the voltage up and they're 100% waterproof. I've had this in this tank for a little over a day and nothing's happened. You'll notice it's not deep enough to totally submerge it, this tank, but I flipped it around. Um, here's this panel close up. This is the one that I destroyed. Uh, you can see these are pretty much, you can't get that glass apart without breaking it. So that's your seal right there. The wiring goes in here and it's been sealed pretty good. And then you also have the gray gasket around it, which that's just basic plastic, but inside of there is a very thick bead of silicone that goes all the way around too. So you basically have two layers of silicone protecting them. All right, so I'm gonna get a temperature reading on this panel here. And you can see the one that's out in the sun is 130 degrees. And now what we're gonna do is actually 100, let's get a, get a hot spot on there. So it's got 100, 135 degrees Fahrenheit, the one that's been exposed out and if you go inside the tank we drop down to that's probably the rim that's the unexposed between 80 and 85 degrees up to 90 for the very top that's been out of the water 102 so that's a quick, pretty significant temperature difference now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a voltage reading on this panel here I'm gonna drop it in the water and see if the voltage increases as it cools All right, so that one's out. And I'm gonna come over here. Whoa, that's hot.
I don't want to shock the glass, so I'm going kind of slow. Okay, it's submerged. Now let's see if the voltage rises. I'm going to give it a little bit of time. You can see that it's already up to 22 now that it's cooled down. And let's see if it matches that other one as it cools a little bit more. Right now the glass is insul insulating it, so it's probably still leaching some heat out. So we've already had a one volt increase. For those of you that think it's the light of the aquarium and the way that the light's refracting off of it, really doesn't have a lot to do with it. Because if that was the case, then the panel would have instantly had an increase when I dropped it in there. And you can see now this panel is creeping up to 23 volts because it's cooling down. So it's totally because of the temperature difference. So photovoltaic panels can be more efficient if people actually submerge them in water when they put them on their roof. It'd be a neat way to heat water simultaneously and increase your voltage output by whatever percentage that works out to be. Now I'm going to take this panel and I'm going to just bring a Fresnel lens over and just see how our voltage jumps up. I got to be careful because the edge of the tank is black and um, plastic so it's going to burn it. So I'm going to go at a shorter focal length. You can see the Fresnel lens bumped it up to 24 volts. This isn't a really good Fresnel lens by the way. So you can see that by submerging the uh, solar panel in the water, keeping it cool, you can see how much more efficient solar panels work when they're in a cool temperature. Now before you take your $1,000 or $10,000 or $100,000 solar panel system and submerge it in water, you really want to test it and make sure, you know, make sure that they're weatherproof and waterproof are really two different things. These are both. These small ones that got them off of eBay, they're like 25 bucks a piece. And you can basically do whatever you want with those. And if you mess one up, it's $25. You know, the more expensive models, I, I don't necessarily know. I can't tell you that that'll work. But um, you don't have to put the whole thing underwater. There are ways, you have glass on both sides. Most solar panels have a glass surface, which is waterproof. So if you can get a thin, build a thin glass layer or something along that lines, you can keep your panels a lot cooler and produce more voltage. Older solar panels used to have a problem. If part of them was covered, they would develop a short, you'd get odd voltages. Most newer solar panels have blocking diodes built throughout them. And what this does is it prevents charge back from the battery, draining your battery at night. And um, it also prevents the, the panels from, you, you can basically cover half of this and you just get less voltage that way. At least that's how these work and the Harbor Freight models work. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.